Hey guys, today I want to talk about the secondary market and what is its effect on card prices. So the secondary market is your local game store, it's the, you know, MTG traders, it's all, Pico Trade would also be kind of a secondary market. They are on a point system and eBay and Craigslist, all of this would be the secondary market. The secondary market is intriguing because there's two ways you can look at it. You can look at it and say Wizards of the Coast does not care about the secondary market when it does stuff. And you can say it does care about the secondary market. I'm of the belief Wizards of the Coast keeps a very close outlook on the secondary market. The only reason they kind of mess up sometimes is it takes them longer because the set has to be approved months in advance to catch up on some cards. For instance, um, the whole Serum Visions card, that card should be a common in Modern Masters. I know it's a Friday night promo and that's awesome for people who want to do that and who can top 8 I guess 4 times. But a foil copy, a Friday night magic copy of it is not nearly as, you know, it's not, it doesn't make sense to me why you would do that when this is the second most played card in Modern right now. As the time of as of the time of recording from this video and you know you make it common then everyone can use it everyone can play with it it's no longer a ten dollar common a ten dollar common that's not even that good the only reason it's good is because every other card that's better than it is banned ponder and um there's another one it's like preordain is that the one that's banned i know sleight of hand it's not banned and people play that sometimes and that card is like, I mean, it is whatever, but it's, none of them are Ponder, right? And then Gataxian Probe doesn't get a reprint. And I'm just like, well, huh. Gataxian Probe is in an Ink Moth Nexus and all, all of this. Um, you can tell the secondary market definitely cares a lot about reprints because the cards that are not reprinted immediately spike up like Ink Moth Nexus, like Gataxian Probe like Serum Visions, even though it has a promo version of it coming out soon. But then you look at some other like factors that indicates that Wizards of the Coast, they need to sell, they need to justify a $10 pack. And if Tomagorf was not in the Modern Masters, very difficult to justify a $10 pack. If uh, Noble Hierarch was not in Modern Masters as a rare, or Cryptic Command was not in it, very difficult to justify those uh, for a $10 pack. The same with Modern Masters 1, they were doing a $7 pack and they justify it as a premium card. Does it cost Wizards any more money to print a premium card? No, probably not. Uh, maybe like half a cent when you combine it all, but that's not going to justify why the booster pack is $3 more expensive or 75% more expensive and won't justify why the booster pack is two and a half times more expensive for Modern Master 2015. So the only way Wizard of Coast can get away with this type of stuff is if it does understand that the secondary market of Box C's is $80 and we need to sell this set, which is terrible. And we can do it by putting this one good card in it. Our Magic Origins, we had Call, Court of Calling, and we had the Orbog, which is very good. Orgbog actually is pretty interesting speculation when it rotates, and I'll get to that in a later video. And you, you look at it and you say to yourself, huh, okay, that's good. And then you look at, you know, the Fetchland reprints, the Shotgun reprints, oh, reprint this, reprint that. They know what's happening in the secondary market. There's no way that they don't know that Goblin Guy is a $20 card. There's no way they don't know Damnation is a $50 card. They're just going to save them for later. And they're going to save these Zendikar lands because let's say Zendikar, Return of Zendikar does not have Zendikar Fest land, does not have Goblin Guide. How, why would anyone buy that over Cons of Tarkir at the same price? Where you know that, hey, these cards are going to be way more valuable in the future than these tap lands or whatever uh, the new land is. And the answer is you would not buy them. Uh, you would not open as many packs. You would not buy as many singles because they would be not as... The, especially since rotation is now like every, what, eight months, every 12 months from now, like rotation has sped up quite a bit because now it's every two sets. So it's two sets, rotate, rotate, 
two sets rotate, two sets rotate, instead of, you know, having that extra set. So we're talking about rotation that is a lot faster than it used to be, and they need to sell product. You need to make money. How can you do that? Secondary market. And that's why I would say any card in modern, you would be unwise to hold on to that card when it's over $50 for too long. Tamagoy, Vendalian Click, maybe they're the exceptions, but for something like Damnation or uh, Adker Valkyrie or something like a... Cards like that would make me very scared, uh, especially Damnation, because I know that they are planning something with Damnation and I know they're going to reprint it somehow uh, to sell packs. Because they reprinted all these other good cards to sell packs and they cannot reprint them again anytime soon so the pool of very valuable cards people want reprinted is becoming smaller and smaller and smaller and if Damnation is reprinted as a rare and a core set its price will do exactly what Core to Callings price did it'll go to five dollars overnight just like that um, because there'll be so much of that open and I totally agree with that I agree that the Secondary market is a very good indicator of what is actually going to get reprinted. Bye guys.